and then hands to prayer, exhale. Gentle breath in and exhale out. Rotate, inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Right leg back, inhale. Child's pose, exhale. Cobra, inhale. Downward dog, exhale. Right forward, inhale. Left forward, exhale. Arms all the way up, inhale. And then hands to prayer, exhale. Last one, together in silence. Left leg leads, forward and back. Gentle breath in, exhale all the way out. So arms up on the inhale, push the hips forward, scoop the tailbone, raise the arms up and arc back. Just at comfortable, try to soften through the spine. It's not forced, tailbone down and arc up and back. Good. Make sure you can breathe calmly. Last breath in. Then hands down on either side of the foot, exhale, fold, all the way down. Prod the fingers down and look up on the inhale, half forward fold, and then exhaling down, three breaths. Slow the breathing down and take this time to soften your face muscles and your shoulders and chest. Good. Great, now right leg back, knee ground. Left knee is gonna sink over the toes. Good, now hands to the hips with the toes. Hands to the hips, wiggle around a little bit. Good, flatten the back foot if you can. Good, and see if you can sink the knee over the toes a bit. That gets you a bit more flexible and then raise the arms in the air. Good. Good, now from here, left fingers down on the outside edge of the hip, right arm over. And then back up. And right fingers down, left arm over. And then up, and then opening up, palms up and back, in line with the ears, or wiggle the arms back behind the ears if you can. Good, then straightening up, and then hands down on either side of the foot, come to downward facing dog, exhale. Plank on the inhalation, chaturanga, exhale, pushing down. Cobra or upward facing dog, inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale. One, slow the breathing down and at the end of every exhale, squeeze the belly in, Uddiyana Bandha, great abdominal lock. Great for toning the digestive organs, good detoxifier. Quite handy in engaging the core. Take three more breaths. And two. Last breath in, and exhale all the way out. Pull the belly in and bring your right foot in between the hands and ground the left knee. So wiggle around a little bit, and then bringing your arms up. Sink the knee forward. Shoulders relaxed. So bringing your right hand down, left arm over. And then bring the arm up and then left arm down, right arm over. And coming back up again. And then hands down on either side of the foot. And downward facing dog, exhale. Roll to plank on the inhalation. Chaturanga, exhale, pushing down. Cobra or upward facing dog, holding three breaths. One, eventually squeezing around, protecting yourself around here a little bit more and eventually the shins and the knees and the thighs lift off the ground as well. Good, and then roll back, but you need to have a very firm core. Scoop the tailbone, hip flexors switched on. 
shoulders roll back and take one more breath in and we're going to come back to downward dog via the plank. So curl the toes under, come through the back and come to it. Break and then downward facing dog. Three breaths here. One. Two. Three. Press into the hands. Look up and walk or step or lightly jump forward. Toes to the wrist. And look up on the inhale. Half forward fold. And exhale. Lengthening all the way down. Inhale, coming all the way up to standing. Open the heart center. And exhale, hands to prayer at the chest. Bending the knees, scoop the tailbone down. We're going to sit down in an imaginary chair and come to Utkatasana. Now watch with Utkatasana. I see a lot of butt sticking out like this or the other way, people doing it like this. But it's a real core um, firming exercise. You want to scoop the tailbone. It's really like you're sitting in a chair. Our back's kind of prone forward a little. And we don't sit in a chair like that. So scoop the tailbone. And when you have your hips working in towards your ribs, your core is completely engaged. One more breath in. And then exhale, hands down. Look up on the inhale. And exhale, fold. Good. So next time, this time when we bring our left leg back, we're going to come to warrior one. So bring the left leg back well over a meter and ground the heel behind. Bend the right knee. Hands to the hips. Keep the left hip forward, right hip back. And then raising the arms up as you inhale. Bend the right knee deeper. Three more breaths. And two. Now take one more breath in. I'd like you to stay looking over the right knee. We are only doing minimal movements to the next posture, warrior two. Opening out the hip and the knee stays bent. Extend out of the fingertips. Great, now keep that knee bent and reverse the warrior, but don't even touch the back leg. See if you can either swing the arm behind or wrap the arm behind the leg and grab the thigh. Good, then back to warrior two and come into some versions of side ankle posture that suits you. Either the elbow on the knee or the arm down. Today bring the arms up 180 degrees so you can work on your spinal rotation, your twist. Getting that right shoulder and part of the chest to face the sky. If you are comfortable, you can half bind or full bind. Completely up to you. Okay, from here, back to warrior two. How the legs? <laughs> okay, straighten the legs for a moment, watch it. And then we'll go back to warrior two. And reverse the warrior. You're almost on the home stretch. Straighten the back leg and reverse the triangle. And then triangle pose. like you are bringing that left shoulder blade back into an imaginary wall with the right buttock. Take one more breath in. Exhale, looking down. We are going to come back to warrior one. So work on those mindful transitions between the poses. And here we're going to do some options. We're going to bring some our hands down. And bring the right leg all the way behind you. Square. So you can keep the leg up high. And then you can chaturanga like this. But if that is not an option, you're going to bring your foot down and come into plank. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog. And downward facing. Yep, and downward facing dog. Everybody meeting in downward dog. Now look at your hands. Ideally, you're all the way at the top of the mat. So, clambering forward. Little. 
You want to feel like someone is standing on your hand. I just got to remember not to stand on your feet. <laughs> I'm drawn towards people's injuries. <laughs> Bringing the left foot in between the hands, ground the right heel down. Virabhadrasana one, remember, it's a bit of a thigh buster this series. So, so we're working ever more right hip forward, left hip back. You feel like you are lifting from your instep through the inner calf and grounding back heels, yes. So try not to collapse the inner calf, good. Strong inside edge of legs from instep all the way to the pelvis. Three more breaths. Two and one. Now last inhale, exhale out to warrior two. So there's a lot of warriors in yoga. Not, yeah. And yoga is not about fighting, but it is about the fight between your higher mind and your lower mind. And these poses cause a major fight with your higher mind and lower mind. Because your lower mind says you want to come out of the pose. But your higher mind says if you stay in the pose, you're going to get stronger. So let the higher mind win here. Now reverse the warrior, keep the knee bent. And maybe the arm behind the back. And back to warrior two and then side angle pose, either elbow on the knee or slide the arm down, but the top arm is at 180 degrees to emphasize the spinal rotation today. Using that resistance between the arm and the leg to twist from the middle of the spine upwards and over. Great, now back to warrior two. We're almost there, we'll reverse the warrior. <sighs> Straighten the back leg, the front leg. Good. Yep, and then he's trying. Spread the feet. To warrior one, inhale. Hands down on either side of the foot. Swing the left leg all the way up and back into three legged downward dog. And then you can work on the vinyasa you like. You either put the foot down or you swing all the way down. Stay there a moment, Emma. Trying to keep that leg. So you need a lot of back strength around here, okay? And then, oh, beautiful, very good. Yeah, kick it up a little higher, it's nice. Upward dog, inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale. Close your eyes, go back to the breath. Raise your right leg in the air behind you. What I'm quite focused on here is not tilting into the support side. Getting as much leg through the support side as possible. And we know that we are isolating just that leg that's lifting. If we could prod our left fingers to the ground or lift the left arm off or lift the left arm up. Now this is not going to happen if all our weight is stuck in the left side. So see if you can bring your weight back to the right hand and left foot and engage the left hip flexor and raise the right leg and left arm. Play around with it, have some fun and then bring the left hand down and bring your right foot in between the hands and ground the left foot. So I like this posture, rotated side angle pose, because you can go from quite basic to quite advanced. So raise the left arm up and bring the left shoulder blade all the way over the right knee. Elbow to knee, knee to elbow. Hands to prayer and twist. 
So some of you may be able to bind if you like. And whatever, whichever way you do, yeah, do, just stay in the correct position, I think, if you like. Curl the back toe under and straighten the back. So stay there a few moments. Five breaths. And four. Three. Two. One. Now stay there. Our next pose is warrior two. We want to get there gracefully and mindfully. So press into the legs. Start to keep the hands at preposition, but lift the torso up, straighten the back leg. And rolling into warrior two on your exhale. Still keep the knee bent. Interlace your fingers. Okay, we can cheat a bit. Straighten the leg for one moment. Means we're going to be here for a while. Bend the knee again. Turn the torso forward. Shoulder runs down the inside edge of the leg. Press into both feet. Humble warrior. So try out the shoulder on the inside edge of the leg. It's not a forward bend over the leg per se. Knee up. Yeah, there. As if the head could come down past the ankles. Work the down past. So it's not so much a twist. the right hip more back. If you're sticking your right hip out. Okay, hands down on either side of the foot and come to downward dog and wiggle it out. And you've got your option, you can stay in downward dog or roll to plank on the inhale. Chaturanga, exhale, pushing down. Upward facing dog, inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale. Raise your left leg in the air behind you. Try not to collapse the right hip. So remember what we're going to try and do here, that muscle isolation. So if you feel more weight in your right side than your left, you have to tilt the hips back and lift through the hips, lift through the shoulder. You're gonna shift your weight into this hand. And there yet, that's it. See if you can lift the fingers off the ground, play around with it. A couple of ways of cheating, look up a little bit so you've got a gaze at the ground. There you go. Perfect. Point your toe and then it looks beautiful. Okay, then right hand down and bring your left foot in between the hands. Ground the right knee and raise the right arm all the way up and hook the right shoulder blade all the way over the left knee. Pull the belly in and hands to press. So go through your options. You can stay with the back knee on the ground or you can curl the back toe under and as you do so, you keep the left hip down as you straighten the back leg. Pull the belly in and twist. So don't fall over or anything. Good. Good posture. Three. Four. Five. Press into the feet. Now I want you to think about the transition before you do it. Because, yep, yeah, it's warrior two. That's it. Keep the knee bent. Good. Nice and graceful. So here, yep, and then turn the back toes in. So it looks like, like that. Okay, I was letting you cheat on the other side, wasn't I? You're going to straighten the leg for a mini moment, bend the knee. Now, roll that right hip back, and then shoulder on the inside edge of the knee, and arms over the head. side of the foot. Downward dog, exhale. Roll to plank on the inhale. Chaturanga, exhale. Upward dog, inhale. Downward dog, exhale. Five breaths. 
and form. Three, spread the fingers out actually more. Bit shoulder and hip to the And two. One, just a few more variations. Not so much dynamic vinyasa, but we'll stay. The downward dog will be our neutral pose. Raise your right leg in the air. Once again, don't collapse the left hip and bend the knee. But open up the hip a lot so you can bounce a little bit to get more flexibility. Bend your knees so your heel comes in towards the left body. Good. Now look between the hands. And I'm going to get you to bring your right foot on the line in front and ground your left heel on the line behind. There's lines on the mat. Okay, prod the fingers down. And I want you to visualize yourself if you try to develop that awareness of hip alignment. So we don't want the hips to be completely out. You want to pull the right hip back and the left hip forward. It means squeezing the lower abdominals in. Look up on the inhale and then actually look at your hips. Tuck your chin in. Look at your hips if they're square. Inhale and then exhale. Fold over the front leg. So we're going to go through a few different variations here. So this is our easiest option. And you can stay here if you like. There are quite a few stages. Stage two, do not collapse into the support hip, but bring your back leg all the way up into a standing split. And enjoy that stretch. So if you sink into your right side, you're gonna feel very stuck in your hip in a moment. So keep squeezing your hip in, and lift your hip out of the thigh bone and roll down. Bend the knee a little. You can stay where you are. Keep your belly stuck to the leg, chest up, and bring one hand to prayer at the chest. Your chest is up. This is going to be the counterbalance to the leg. The other hand at the chest, toppling tree. And if you like, see if you can raise the torso. So we have four or five different stages. You could have stayed at stage one. Point the back toe. Now rewind, fold over the leg, hands down, straighten the leg, bring the back leg down, and come to downward dog and shake it out. You can stay in downward dog or you can move into your vinyasa if you like, it's up to you. A lot of vinyasas today, good. left leg in the air behind you. Knee up, bend the knee, heel towards the other body. Ah, so here, because I did the whole practice for you, I didn't notice that. You still want to lift, even though we are doing this kind of hip yawn, you don't want to have that crunching feeling on the other side. Good, from here. Bring the foot in between the hands. Line the, the two heels up and the right foot is just going to turn out to the right. A little bit, not too much. So when you prod your fingers down, both legs are straight, and you're on the line, look up, and start to drive that left hip back, chest up. And then look at your hips and see if they're aligned. Inhale, chest up, and exhale, fold. So remember we're going in stages, we've either got this stretch or you're going to tip the weight to the top foot and raise the back leg into your standing split. You are going to then, without crunching the hip, bend the knee, bring the belly to the thigh, chest up and coming into your toppling tree, hands to prayer. Anyone yeah, giving that a go? <laughs> Hands to prayer. Chest up a little, so strong back leg. Yeah, give it a go. Chest up, chest up, chest up. Chest up, cobra chest. 
Chest up more. I want you to look in at the beautiful view outside. And now rewinding. And bring that back leg down. Come back to Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog, exhale. Plank on the inhalation. Chaturanga, exhale. Upward dog, inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale. These are your last breaths in the vinyasa. One, two, and three. Press into your hands, look up between the hands and walk, step or lightly jump forward all the way to the top of the mat. Look up on the inhale. Exhale, head down all the way. And raise the arms all the way above the head. Inhale. Gentle back arch. And then hands to prayer. Exhale, close the eyes and take a gentle breath in. Breath in. And exhale all the way out. Now bringing your legs out wide, you can place the entrance to the studio. Legs out wide. Heels out, toes in, hands to the hips and look up on the inhale and create a little bit of a back arch, push your hips forward. Now from here, learning where the bend comes from, the flexion comes from the hips. So we're going to keep the sternum lifted, chest up, but don't poke your chin up. Chest up. And we're going to get that flexion, stop 90 degrees, scoop the tailbone down. So don't stick the bottom up, yeah. Scoop the tailbone so your hips are going in towards your ribs. Bring your left hand down underneath the center of the heart space and bring the left hip out to the left. Squeeze the lower belly in and twist towards the right. And that resistance of bringing the left hip to the left should get right into the center of the spine. Okay, and then to the other side. And hands down and walk the hands in between the feet and look up on the inhale and then exhale fold head down trigger grip the big toes so i'd like this to be your relaxing component of the class elbows out we've just done quite a strong vinyasa series so i want you to close your eyes and go back to the breath and start to breathe into those parts of the body that hold tension melt a little, start to soften. Elbow is bent in the chair, not forced. few moments while I give an advanced variation if anybody would like to do one. We're going to bring the head down into headstand and into crow. Not compulsory. And then slowly coming all the way up. Inhale. And come to mountain pose at the top of the mat. A little bit of core work. Good. Palms up on the inhale. And exhale, palms down. Walk or jump back. And push you down. Okay. So from here, the chest, the ribs are going to lift, but the floating rib stays on the ground. The legs lift. Squeeze your legs together. Neck long, so your heart is lifting. Interlace your fingers behind the back. Palms together. Five breaths here, arms lifting. And four. Three. Two. And lower the legs down. Elbows in sphinx or full cobra on the inhale. Scoop the tailbone. Shoulders come back and then 
and exhale. Forward down, and you can windscreen wipe the feet if you're already needing a little bit of release in the lower back. Hands down, a little bit in front, elbows in. Pelvis presses to the ground, come back to your cock. Bend your right knee and you're going to try and bring the right heel as far in half frog down past your glute. If you can get your fingers over your toes, give it a go. Elbow up. Yeah, that's it. So what I do, I get my thumb pad into the metatarsal, the knuckle of the toe there, and then fingers over. Yeah, you got it. Mind over matter, it's good. There you go, it's a fun, it's a little yogi trick. <laughs> okay, now hold the, I like to hold the inner foot today, and then work the foot as far away from you as you can. How do you feel it? Um, okay. My back do? too. Okay, come onto your elbows. Okay, you've got to squeeze your lower, just a little bit at your lower back, the lower lumbar. And use your hip flexors a lot more. This whole working and opening here should release tension a lower back, ideally. Good. And then coming back down. And to the other side. And then working the foot all the way back. And then from here, chest up, grabbing both legs. I try and keep my feet quite close together because I've got a tendency to go apart. You guys are quite aligned, which is good. Good, okay, from here, coming out into Sphinx or Cobra, last one on the inhale. Moving into your angry cat. So coming up onto all fours and round the back, deep, deep stretch, lengthen and release. And then you can move into your child's pose. And then you're just coming up and then move yourself to seated. We'll release the back a little bit more. Dandasana. Bring your, uh, just mirror me, right leg over left. You can either keep that leg straight or bring it under, but don't sit on the heel. This is Matsyandrasana. And raise your opposite arm, left arm. And going all the way over. So lift up through the spine on the inhale and twist on the exhale. Try to relax the hand, maybe turn up to make a fist. Inhale and exhale. Back to the center. Cross the, no, don't change yet. Keep that leg open, still. We're actually going to come to cow face pose because we're sort of in a similar position. Line the knees on top. So you're the same knee that's on top, we're going to bring that arm under. So start to roll the shoulder forward here. Exaggerate, actually even with your other hand, push the shoulder bone down. This is a very good tip for if you have any kind of shoulder injury. Sometimes when you don't have any issues in your shoulder, it's not necessary. But otherwise, then you're going to bring your fingers behind your back, fingertips towards the neck. Okay, I'll get you in a belt in a moment. And the top arm over the head, chest up. And then eventually you'll fold down. Um, screening there. Yeah. yeah, I've had, I've, I've recovered from that. I know exactly the pain, and unfortunately, this is the pose that heals. I lay like I lay on my arm like that for like a half an hour a day, screaming and crying until all of it came out. Yeah. <laughs> so 
slowly, slowly coming all the way up and release that. We don't do this posture enough, do we? No. These forgotten poses. Okay, Dandasana. And the other side, so crossing over and then hooking over. Try and keep that lower left hip sit bone through on the ground. You get that length there. Okay, looking forward, releasing, and then bringing knee over. So that arm, the knee that's on top, that arm is going behind this time. Yeah, we've always got a comfy side, yeah? I see that all the time. One's very natural and one's holding all the stress and folding forward. Arms across this knee a little bit over a bit more. So that's hips. Both of you might want to move your belt to the side and be in the centre of your mat for this one. We're going to be up and down the mat a little bit. So chest up, arms forward, and we're going to once again go through stages. Ideally, don't tip the um, toes to the ground. So come to tabletop or come to full boat. Navasana. And then we're going to go down into dish. Holding, shoulder blades off the ground, chin in. Back to dish. Okay, here's a fun trick. As long as your neck's not injured, rocking back and rocking up to boat. Try not to touch the ground with feet or hands. Good. Okay, we've got boat, dish, boat. This time we rock back, hold feet behind the head a few breaths. One, two, Three, but visualize yourself coming up to a perfect bow and then do it. <laughs> See if you can trigger grip your big toes or if you've got very long legs, hold your calves. Legs out wide. In uh, kids yoga, we call this bat. <laughs> Find that magic spot on your bottom. <laughs> exactly how we teach it to the kids. So the trick is, in fact, the more you relax, like if I hang my legs forward, and I hang back, and I've got that magic counterbalance. You can either do it tense like this, and you got it, or if you hang, you've got it. Good, then roll back. <laughs> and then roll up. <laughs> okay. And then coming up to the side. In my video yesterday, this, it got cut off here. So we are doing this and adding it onto the video. <laughs> so extending out to this side. It's in the other studio, so the scene's going to change. <laughs> but it is what it is. I'm not going back. And then to the other side. And then chin in and coming forward. Up, smile, flex. <laughs> and then slowly, slowly coming up. That's the outside edge of the feet and coming. Okay. So we're going to do headstand. So you can do it against the wall. Do you need me to remind you headstand or do you want to do preparations? You know what you're doing at the moment, don't you? So where are we with headstands here? We've done them together, haven't we? Once, yeah. 
Okay, so how about I go through the preparations with you while yeah. Emma stays in the headstand. Preparation one is dolphin. So you, you're going to be in um, on your knees in cat and then grab your elbows. That's the distance you want your elbows. Then you're going to interlace your fingers and press your palms together. No, no, we're not doing it like that. We're just going to, sorry, we're going to keep the head up off the ground. We're going to do this. We're going to just get our shoulders strong. Good. Bottom in the air and we're going to go forward on the inhale into like a low plank. And then up. Stretch your armpits in towards your knees. Exhale down and inhale up. Do six of those. So Emma, you are now the demonstrator for the headstand. Very good. Excellent. How do I look upside down? Perfect. Beautiful there. Everything set up. Good. Squeeze your legs together. Perfect. Okay, let's do the headstand. So, what I would do, just plug in your knees. Double the mat. Okay. Don't have the surface too soft, not too hard. So, once again, you're going to grab your elbows. That's the distance you want your elbows. Fingers all the way around. Glue your elbows. No, you're all the way around. So, yeah. Now, when you glue your elbows to the ground so they're not going to wobble, then interlace your fingers and spread your wrists. You're not going to lie on that little finger. You're going to bring the crown of the head down and the hand's going to cut behind. Glue the elbow down. Straighten your legs. Walk, no, no, yeah, okay, I was going to teach you, okay. Walk your legs in, I was going to go a little bit slower. Now, which leg wants to kick up? Left. Uh, which one's your left? This one, yeah. So, yeah, now lie, yeah, lie. Now, try not to lie in the wall, try to squeeze your legs together. Good. Chin in. Chin in more so the nape of the neck is long. Oh, and your free balancing. Squeeze your legs more. Squeeze your toes. Good. Fantastic. You could try um, Spider-Man handstand if you want, Emma. Against the wall, yeah? Against the wall, or you want to... Or you're, how about I, I support you in a handstand? Yeah, on one. Okay. Exhale, and inhale, kick up. Just squeeze your legs. Yeah? How are you trying to free balance? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Good. So, Alice to release the neck, cat cow pose. Yeah, so the angry cat, happy cat. Yeah, you can see this. Good. Good mix. She's got Aaron and me as the teacher. You can just tell the different influences. <laughs> Okay, from here, we're going to do a series at the end which combines shoulder stands with a series of back bends. And then we're on the home stretch. Okay, well done, guys. Because um, you have to do everything so perfectly. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is um, I'll just demonstrate the couple of options for shoulder stand. Stage one is just staying in a supported shoulder stand. Stage two, all the way up. Challenge for today. Other supported near a lumbar. And you can play around with the mix between option two and three. But the shoulder stands, one of the most important postures in the practice. Head stands and shoulder stands should not be avoided. They are the kings and the queens of all poses. So if you go, they possess every therapeutic benefit of a whole entire yoga practice. There's a lot of yoga practices these days. They can't really put headstands and handstands in the practice due to the numbers in the classroom and some conditions with some people's bodies. But if you can put it into your practice, you're going to sort all your problems out. Close your eyes when you're in this position that you're comfortable with. Relax your face muscles and draw your gaze inwards towards your third eye. Shambhavi Mudra. Breathe calmly. Bring your feet over your head into plow at some point. Hips still over the shoulders. Curl your toes towards your head. Try and keep your hips even more set. Um, now let's interlace your fingers behind the back. Press your wrists down. Interlace. Yeah, and arms long. 
to try and get more on top of the shoulders as you can. You can bend your knee. I would rather bend knees than bend spines. So keeping on lengthening, lengthening up. Yeah, you feel that? And yeah, so you got your sternum quite close to your chin. But try to keep your throat, throat soft. Okay, bend your knees to either side of the ears. Okay, so you can come into bridge pose from here. Alice, you're going to stay five or six more breaths. What I mean by bridge is starting to warm up. Yeah. That's, where the, that's where we're heading. Great. And then Alice, hold your back. Don't come down yet. Come back to shoulder stand. Hold your, hold, support your spine with your hands. Good. So I'm not sure if you're comfortable to do this. However, the challenge is to drop one foot down and then the other. If that doesn't work, you can just roll down. You're good. Good, good, good. Okay, we are going to work into bridge to flatten your feet. You need strong legs to get the better back spinal extension or move movement in the spine. Push into the feet. Then you can bring your hands under your shoulders and you can pop onto the crown of the head or if you've got a strong neck, you can pop onto your forehead. It's a great stretch. And then when you are comfortable, you move into your back bend. So everybody's got a different version or variation of back bend. So here is where you can take about a minute or two to work out what you are working on, whether you are pushing all the way up, whether you need some help, good, whether you're working on everything, I'm going to get you off in a while. It's okay. Bring your hands around my ankles. Thumb around. Press and push up. Good. Five. Stronger legs. Your legs aren't working, especially this one. That one's working, that one's not. Four, three, two, one. Chin in and come down. Well done. Guys, amazing. So hug your knees into the chest and make some circular motions in each direction. Arms out 180 degrees, palms down, and bring your knees to the right and look to the left. Back to the center, and then to the other side. And back to the center. Now you can do exactly the same, or you can eagle cross the left leg all the way over the right and put a foot under, and then go to the right side and look to the left. Ooh, there you go. Hand back to the center and change the crossover and come to the other side. Amazing. Okay, set yourself up for Shavasana. I'll turn the lights off. What I'm going to get you to do is get your bolster about 10, 15 centimetres from the wall. And Emma, you can demonstrate because you do this most of the time. Legs up the wall, it has to be the best Shavasana you could possibly do. Well done. your eyes. 